Good evening, and welcome to what passes for the news on the Smart Scarecrow Show. Uh, in reality, uh, this is news commentary. Do you remember a fellow named Andy Rooney back in the old days? You know, he used to start every one of his shows with, Did you ever get a paper cut? They ought to make paper illegal. Paper cuts kill more people than... You know, that's the kind of rant that uh, Andy Rooney used to do. And it was, frankly, he, he always brought a little bit of humor to his presentation. But buried within the humor was usually an interesting message that was worthy of consideration. Now, I think anybody who's followed this show for any length of time probably has a, a pretty good idea of what I think of the US government using drone technology within the borders of the United States and targeting United States citizens for either surveillance or good heavens summary execution by use of this technology frankly it's bad enough we're blowing up brown people with the darn things four or five thousand miles away. I mean, an awful lot of perfectly innocent people have been blown up by these drones. They'll blow up 20 people to get this one guy that they think maybe might have, on a good day, said something bad about Obama's mama. Okay, now, the people of the world look at you, and they say it's your fault because this is being done in your name with your money and you ain't doing nothing about it. So the rest of the world blames you. Now you can sit back and say, well, that's not my government doing that. I wouldn't have voted for those bastards. If they'd asked me, I'd, I wouldn't let them do those terrible things. That's awful. But the fact is, they're doing it. They claim to be representing the people of the United States. When they go out and blow up 20 people, to get one guy who maybe, maybe not, was a bad guy. Now, how do you think the rest of the world looks at you? Would you feel secure going on a vacation somewhere in the Middle East right now? Would you wear an American flag on your back? Times are getting hard here in the United States. It's getting tougher and tougher for average people to find useful work. Those who do get work are finding that, you know, pay scales are pretty miserable. I don't know what minimum wage is. I have not had a minimum wage job since the late 1960s. But I can tell you that back in the 1960s, a minimum wage job paid about a buck sixty an hour or thereabouts, and that on that buck sixty an hour, working about 30 hours a week, I bought a motorcycle, paid for my insurance, shared an apartment. I had an apartment with another guy, so I had a roommate. But you know, we, we between the two of us, we rented an apartment, paid our rent, paid our electric. Plus, I was putting myself through uh, junior college on a minimum wage job back in the late 1960s. Today, a minimum wage job probably wouldn't buy you a tank of gas after a week. So, you know, it has gotten tough out there. And people are starting to get a little testy, shall we say. Okay? Uh, people are starting to get a little bit angry. Now, those who are conspiracy-minded say it was all planned. It's supposed to be that way. They're trying to prod you and goad you into doing something stupid. They would like to back you into a corner so hard that you can't do anything else but come out fighting. That's why they got these armored 
personnel carriers, 2,700 armored personnel carriers, one for every county within the United States. That's why they got this billion and a half bullets there stockpiling. That's why they're going out of their way to buy a whole bunch of M16s. They were reported as uh, select fire AR-15s. Well, a select fire AR-15 is an M16. Get down to it. You're giving military hardware to the police. Fully automatic military hardware is being distributed to police departments and sheriff's departments within the continental United States. These people are gearing up for something, and they keep pushing, and they keep pushing, and they keep pushing. The militarization of the police departments is starting to get a little bit scary. Now, it's not been reported much on the news, but uh, not too far from me, up in New York, in a uh, part of New York called Brooklyn, uh, there was some kind of a misunderstanding uh, between a, a young 16-year-old fella and a couple of police officers. Uh, police officers claim that they saw a weapon, but uh, no weapon was found. Uh, but they apparently shot this 16-year-old kid in New York. Now, that was bad enough that they shot a 16-year-old boy with what appears to be no clear threat to themselves. But now it's come out that they shot him in the back. So apparently, he was moving away from them. Not only was he no real threat, but he had his back to them. Well, you know, maybe he was suspected of a crime. Maybe he was running away. Who, who knows? But the fact is, New Yorkers didn't take it very well. There have been riots on the streets of Brooklyn for the past three days regarding this incident. Police are out in force. And a number of protesters have been dealt with very harshly. Um, all signs are it's going to continue. Now, this is just the type of incident I was talking about earlier. They keep pushing you, and they keep pushing you, and they keep pushing you until like a cornered animal, you have no choice but to come out with your fangs bared. And at that point, they have the excuse they wanted to knock you into the ditch. And with the increasing police presence in and about New York, it could start there. Keep an eye on that one. It's not being reported on your news, uh, news at 6. You're going to have to investigate alternative uh, news to see any of the reports on it. But it is happening right now. And in other news, the white smoke has billowed forth and we have a new pope. Now, I'm not a Catholic, so to me, you know, it's kind of like saying, okay, Brazil has a new president or you know, but, you know, I realize that to the 1.6 billion Catholics worldwide, um, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. Um, I forget exactly how many, but I, I think this is like, you know, less, less than, there's been like less than 250 popes of the Catholic Church since there was a Catholic Church. Uh, so this is a big deal. And the person to whom they bestow this honor uh, is in a pretty rare crowd. Uh, the fellow who's been elected comes from Argentina, but he does have one thing going for him. He is of uh, Italian descent, so he does have that in his favor. Most popes over the centuries have been Italian, and uh, this fellow is from an Italian bloodline but he's um, a cardinal of, uh, uh, of, of Argentina. Um, the other interesting thing is it turns out he's a Jesuit. 
Now, those of you who are not too familiar with the makeup of the Catholic Church, the Jesuits are like the uh, um, the ninja class of, of Catholics. You know, if, if, if Catholics had a group of ninjas at their disposal, they would be the Jesuits. And the Jesuits have always claimed the position that most people who are critical of the Catholic Church refer to as the Black Pope. And, of course, the throne of St. Peter is sat upon by what's referred to as the White Pope. Well, now the Jesuits, for the first time in the history of the Catholic Church, have control not only of the Black Pope, but they now also have a white pope. Say what you want about the Catholic Church. I look at it as a very political organization. Uh, and to me, the politics of this indicates that the Jesuits are now firmly in control. So the Catholic Church has now moved towards a very militaristic stance, along with Homeland Security, buying armored personnel carriers and 1.6 billion bullets, it appears that the Catholic Church is also getting ready for something. Now, usually when popes come in, there is this period of, you know, happy days are here again. Uh, quite often, once the pope has been in power for some time, um, we see their true makeup. It's always difficult to tell, but, uh, you know, while I wish this new pope well, same as I would wish a new leader of Brazil or a new leader of Venezuela or a new leader of Russia, I would wish them well. Um, frankly, Mr. Pope, you're going to have to show me something. Please show me that you are this, not this. Right now, verdict's out. If you were asked in a poll whether you trusted your government, how would you answer? I mean, if it was just a simple yes or no, do you trust your government? Yeah? Uh -huh. Well, in the most recent consolidated poll, and this is a consolidation of about 20 individual polls taken, it appears that in a best-case scenario, only 30% of the American population trusts their government. Now, if you look back in history, back in the 50s, right after World War II, we were the good guys. You know, let's face it, we'd, we'd been through about 10 years of war propaganda. We'd been fed all this nonsense about how we're fighting for mom, apple pie, and the girl we left behind. And, and, you know, those darn Nazis, you know, they're, they're killing all the Jews and they're raping Europe and they're horrible guys. And those slanty-eyed Japanese, or Japs as they called them, or Nips, you know, they had all kinds of degrading names that they would call the, the Japanese. You know, they, they can't fly an airplane because their eyes are squinty. And, you know, those, you know, they're easy to beat. We'll kick their butts all the way back to Japan, you know. And, and the idea of dehumanizing your enemy and building up your people is a common propaganda technique that those of us who are cynics recognize immediately you know and when they started talking about how you know all them arab camel jockey towel head this that and the other thing, you know like we could see it come oh god here we go again you know and then next they're going to be eating babies and you know i mean let's get real folks i mean you know uh, most of the people in the Middle East, they got wives, they got kids, they got a home, they got jobs they got to go to, they got bills to pay, just like you. They're just average folks. And chances are, they got a government that's a bunch of assholes 
same as you. You know, it'd be real nice if we could get, you know, the, uh, the boss of Iran and the boss of Washington, D.C., put them together in a ring, strip them down to their jockey shorts and let them go at it. You know, we'd all, yeah, man, we'd just be eating our popcorn, rooting for our team, right? I mean, wouldn't it be civilized if that was the way nations solved their disagreements? But no, no. Long about 1963, trust in the U.S. government hit its all-time peak. Almost 80% of the people would have responded, yes, we trust our government. Now, this was right after a major shock. We had just had a president assassinated. John Kennedy just been killed in Houston. And, you know, we all pulled together. And, you know, we got behind our government. We got behind Lyndon Johnson. And, of course, you know, history shows we got behind the wrong guy. But that neither, that's neither here nor there. At the time, it was a major shock. And faith in the U.S. government, trust in the U.S. government, hit an all-time high in 1963 with almost 80% the population of the United States answering such polls. You bet you we trust our government. We're the good guys. We can do no wrong. Then the uh, Vietnam War lit up. Uh, inflation took off. Uh, I remember buying my first home, uh, taking out a mortgage, having to pay like a 16% interest rate on a home. You know, you young folks out there, you know, you probably can't believe somebody would have to pay damn near credit card interest to buy a home. But yeah, first uh, first home mortgage I had to take out was a 16%. Uh, you know, those are some tough times, They're very challenging times. You know, the, uh, uh, the post-Vietnam era, we hit kind of an all-time low in terms of faith in government. And by the time Jimmy Carter's reign in office was coming to a close, we had indeed reached a, a low point with only about 25% uh, of the population of the United States answering such polls, yes, I trust my government. Now, Ronald Reagan came in and we, we had kind of a momentary feel-good moment, okay? Something about Reagan... You know, I mean, frankly, his policies were not all that great, and he didn't really do that much. He did slow down the inflation that was killing us. I mean, at one point, we had inflation in this country running at about 20%. That was pretty wicked. 20% uh, per year. As a matter of fact, inflation was ingrained in the system. One nice thing about inflation is if you were a manufacturer's representative and you were selling, say, um... Pick a, pick a commodity item that, that's a popular hot... Televisions. You're selling televisions. You're the manufacturer and you're selling to Best Buy. Best Buy would buy every television you had because they know if they sat that thing on the shelf and didn't even sell it, six months later they'd make a 10% profit just for having it. So back in those days, uh, it was real easy to be a manufacturer's rep. You could sell every piece of product you made because you know retailers would buy anything you could sell them because just having it on their shelves would increase the value of the product due to inflation. That's how ingrained inflation was in the U.S. economy back in the early 70s, that recently. Now, Reagan kind of stopped that. He got inflation under control. So if there's one good thing that Reagan did, that was it. But still, even after all the back slapping and all the happy days are here again associated with the Reagan administration, by the time Reagan was moving out of office, only about 45% of the U.S. population would have answered those polls, yes, I trust my government. Then we got whacked in the back of the head again, kind of like a Kennedy assassination, but you know, we, we took a big hit long about 2001, where, you know, we were told that, you know, a bunch of crazy towel-headed camel-driving crazies from the Middle East uh, flew a few airplanes into some buildings and, you know, absolutely shocked everybody in the country into thinking that, you know, we were at war. Oh, my God, we've been attacked. 
We've been attacked by a foreign power. We need to figure out who the hell did this and kick some ass. And uh, it kind of galvanized the American psyche. And we all pulled together. You know, that's one thing about people, not just Americans, but people. You know, as bad as we knew George Bush was, he was the president, and damn it, we were at war. So all of a sudden, George Bush, probably second worst president we've had in the last hundred years or so, second worst president we've had in the last hundred years, he was getting like, you know, 55, 60%. Of the Americans saying, yeah, I trust my government. Now, nowhere near the kind of faith in the government that existed after World War II. Nowhere near the kind of faith in the U.S. government that existed after the Kennedy assassination. But right after the 9-11 incident, faith in the U.S. government shot through the roof for about six months. So, you know, the uh, residual effect, their ability to maintain the support for policies that very quickly start looking absolutely egregious. The time frame is contracting with every shock. It could be that if we had a 9-11 incident tomorrow, we'd all shrug our shoulders and say, okay, you know, they're at it again. What's on TV tonight? Dancing with the stars on? Oh crap! All they're doing, all they're showing me is buildings falling down. Come on, or, or is Dancing with the Stars? Yeah, at some point or another, that's how jaded we will become. Right now, faith in the United States government is optimistically at about 30% of the population. Some polls have it as low as 18%. Some polls have it as low as 18% of the population trusting their government. Government gets up and says something, 72% of the population says, you're lying. You're lying again. You've lied to me so many times. I know you're lying because your mouth is moving. Okay? 72% of the population has that point of view. So, just suppose you backed a little tin pot dictatorship in Asia called uh, North Korea. Just suppose you backed them into a corner to where they just didn't have any damn choice. I mean, they weren't looking for a squabble, but you know, you. you you pushed them, and you pushed them, and you pushed them to the point where they just don't have any alternative. You think you'd be able to rally your people around the flagpole to fire up World War III? A philosopher once said, you know, what if they threw a war and nobody decided to come? I doubt very seriously if that'll be the results. I suspect we are hell-bent on World War III. I doubt very seriously if there's any way we can stop it. It'll be driven by economic failure that, whether it's been contrived by some, you know, Zionist, fascist, mafioso, mafiosos, we don't know. Who knows? You know, there's a lot of speculation out there. There's, you know, Everybody and his brother has a, the scenario that they think is right. This one thinks that, uh, you know, uh, micro nukes brought down the Twin Towers. This one thinks that uh, uh, space beam weapons brought it down. This one over here says it's uh, nanothermite. You know, the problem is, you know, the, all the groups who are fighting amongst themselves about how those buildings were brought down, they're ignoring the central issue. They're so busy fighting amongst themselves that they are ignoring that one central issue. The story given us by our government was a bold-faced lie. That is the real issue. And the same thing comes down when we get into these fracases 
with other people in the world. You know, they get us divided to where, oh, you know, I think it's this. Oh, no, no, you're all full of crap. It's that. It's, it's something else. It's, you know, we get us all divided to where we're all fighting amongst each other about, you know, which one of the ridiculous conspiracy theories is the truth. And what we fail to realize is that we're wasting our energy fighting amongst ourselves with all these diverse opinions when the core issue is our government has lied to us all. Which one of us has the real deal is irrelevant. The issue that is central is that your government lies to you. They're playing you for a fool and they're purposely getting you fighting against your neighbor about inconsequential bullshit when you should be going after the real enemy of all. And that was Scarecrow's News Rant for March 14th, 2013. I hope I got you to think about that issue. All righty. Oh, everybody wants to see the BS meter. Okay. There's your damn BS meter. Are you happy now? <laughs> I'll tell you. Can't have a news rant without a BS meter. 